Hi, I'm Rob. I'm Dave. And I'm Mr. Sink. And welcome to the Mr. Sink Show, where we show you how to improve your home. On today's show, we have a licensed waterproofer who's going to show us how to waterproof a shower. And Rob's going to show you what bidet's all about. They're not just for washing your feet. And the pink tutu, will it return? Hopefully not. Well, let's, let's get, get started. started. Okay, so we're on site now and we're going to show you how to do a tiled shower base. So, what are we doing today? Okay, well, nowadays it's becoming really, really popular to tile a shower base. And what's really important when you're tiling a shower base is all sorts of things like waterproofing and how you lay tiles and many other things. So, we're going to call Joe, Joe the Tile Man from Juro Tiles. Come over, Joe. He's going to actually show us how. Okay, Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Okay, well, let's go have a look at uh, what this job's all about. No, let's go. Okay, so all the preparation work has been done. The cement sheet and plaster has been put up. The plumbing has been done, and the cement sheet on the floor has been done, and also the plumbing for the floor has all been done. So. If it was me, I'd be just starting to tile now, but it's actually not the right way to do no, it, is it? The procedure. The procedure is we're going to do a, a screed shower base. Mm -hmm. We're going to create a, a hub through here. Okay. And then uh, sand cement uh, the floor for floor for the shower, for the water to go to the waste. And then we're going to waterproof everything to make sure that we don't um, destroy... This is the upper, upper level here. We don't want to destroy what's happening below, which is a, a kitchen and plastered ceiling, etc. So we've got to make sure that the water doesn't seep through and destroy everything. Okay, well actually you've hit an important point. So can you please explain, now you need a license to do this, is that correct? You do, yes. You've got to be a licensed waterproof um, person that, that comes in and prepares it all. Um, you then can, can get a certificate to um, say that it's done properly and it's going to give you a 10 year guarantee, etc. And um, yeah, that's basically the way it goes. So you're licensed, right? I am licensed, yes. Good. So we're using someone license, which is really important. And um, I, I suppose now you're going to show us how. Okay, today we're going to um, explain how to do this. This is called Hebel Block. We're going to make a, a ledge for the, um, the shower base. So what we're going to do is going to, we're going to pull it down here, right through there, mm -hmm. and create some nice little ledge, which uh, then stops the water also splashing out. And then from there on, we're going to create a shower base out of the sand cement to the waste from that point to there, which then we tile all this. We're actually going to tile that over, right through and around and down to, to the shower waste. Oh wow, okay. And this is a waste, is that not? Yes, this is called a smart tile. Now, this is a new modern thing. You actually insert the tile inside there and all you see is that little lip all the way around, which that's where the water goes in. Oh, so it looks like tile all the way across. Yeah, so oh, you cool. don't even notice there's a, a grate there. So it hides your waste? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Well, in preparation, we're going to cork all around here, around the edges, mm -hmm. to um, as a double barrier for the waterproofing later on, not to, to, to seep through. Okay, cool. So, are you going to show us how? I'm going to show you how now. We're going to start. All right, let's go. Okay, okay so I'm going to do a lot of work now on my, on my knees. So I'm going to have the knee protection, oh, which is great yeah. little... Yeah. Ah, is that what you use when you're sort of uh, on your knees with your wife pleading? Yeah, for something. Please hurry up and finish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to glue this down now and set all up. So we're going to use a um, a water rated uh, lip of nails. Water rated lip of nails. Outdoor lip of nails. Okay, I didn't think that existed. A little bit of the wall here. Glue one in. Okay, so we put the hebel block in. We've uh, we've done some caulking. Now the next step is to. Okay, what we're going to do now is going to put some expanding metal down, which is going to basically hold all the screed together. From in case there's any movement in the building. Uh, prior to that, we're going to actually put some concrete on the, the ground to make sure that the sand cement sticks to the, the floor that's there now. So it's okay. not So some bon some concrete. Is that what this uh, looks like? Porridge. Anyway. Okay. Well, yeah, we've made a mix of uh, basically concrete, sand, uh, cement, and water. 
and make, create like a little slurry. And just mix all that up together. Yum! Yeah. <laughs> it's not the way you make porridge. Reminds me of when I was a kid, I was finger painting. Can you do it with your fingers? Or is it not good for your hands? That's actually that? not good for your hands. It's probably, uh, well, number one, will stick very good to your hands. And number two, it, um, it probably makes your skin crack. Right. That is now ready for the uh, expanding metal. Me. So explain to me this expanding metal. That's like that's like reinforcement when you make concrete. Is that right? Correct. It's basically a smaller version because it's not concrete sand cement. It's expanding metal. But um, solid plasters also use this. Yeah. It just holds all the cement together. Cool. Here we go. So we've showed you in another episode on how to make a sand and cement mix. And the important thing is that you can roll it into a bowl. Beautiful. Perfect. So perfect mix. Perfect mix. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create a level line all the way around and then create a fall from there on. Ah. So Joe, can you give us a few tips on how to do, how to do the levels? Yes, well, um, basically the idea is to get all the outer, once you establish a height that you want to be at on the outer edge, get it all level all the way around. Yep. And then um, basically we're, we're going to leave this a bit lower here for the tile to finish below this point so that when we put tiles it finishes in line with that. Mm -hmm. So we create the fall from that point, that point down there, and that gives us our fall for the water. Okay, so the fall goes this way and that way? Yes, it creates like a funnel. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, so you said a 10 mil fall. Yes. Is, is there a general rule on how much fall? Generally it's about 15 mils per every metre. So okay. a metre long should have 15 mils from that point to that point. Okay. So that's the basic rule. So we're going 10 mil, 10 mil, 10 mil from each corner? Yes. Okay. So what's the next step from here? Well, the next step is we need to let this cure, let it dry, to create, get all the moisture out of it, so then we can then waterproof it. Okay, how long does that take? Uh, generally 24 hours. Okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow then. See you then. Okay, now in the bathroom, we've got toilet, we've got shower, vanity, that type of thing. The cleaning side you know already, but it's more for the about how do we maintain certain things. So things like, if we go to the vanity here, this is something a lot of people don't know. These washers do wear out in time. They can be replaced. So this one has just been replaced with a new one. So it's just a matter of just screwing that off and putting that back on. So, because what it can do is if the washer is worn out it will not hold the water anymore so that's another another suggestion as well dripping taps little things like changing the washers every now and then does help but we'll get a plumber to show that later on in the show little things like this paper towels again wipes wipe it down reuse them now paper towels cannot go in the toilet if you want to flush them down they do have to go into your normal bin but the beauty about toilet paper also tissues, yes, because they're a, a, a soft, soft paper that can be flushed. Also, you can get flushable wipes as well, if necessary, but you have to find the right one at your local areas. But again, please don't put anything heavy because it can clog up the toilet, because this is something a lot of, a lot of, a lot of plumbers complain about, even though they get paid for it, to come out to, to clean out your, and unblock your toilet. But they do make you aware that it's either a heavy paper towel or something that's blocking your way. So there's only certain things that you can actually put down there. Now, use, using a glove just for, for cleaning purposes as well. And if you've got a sponge, you can wipe down the toilet if you want uh, uh, after use as well. Or if you want to use these type of reusable rags or dryers, they can be used on towels. Not towels, they can be used on the shower screens, as I say. But see that? And the beauty about this is they can be squeezed out and reused again. So again, it's been reused. If not, you're not a big fan of that, you can use paper towels or you can use cloths, um, use wipes, 
but the best effect is generally these type of these type of cloths that are actually are reusable and they've also got an essence in it as well which actually can soak up and no and don't leave actual streaks so you can see, you can see where, where i've gone over there i'll do it again so the same type of thing again like with soaps and that sort of stuff if you if you don't if you don't want to um little things like this now beauty like this use a container if you don't want to dirty your bath and keep cleaning all the time you can use containers that actually are reusable so it doesn't actually dirty and you can just reuse your soap or if you don't want to use soap you can use hand hand soaps like this so if it's like a body wash or a body gel and you can get these at, at, at certain places as well it all depends so beauty of these type of things is it's non non-drip that type of thing so it keeps everything quite clean and also environmental too well we're back again and yesterday we uh, finished doing the floor now have a look it's all rock hard now and i can actually stand on it now now we're actually ready for the next step and the most important step which is the waterproofing um, so joe you're going to show us how the waterproofing is done yes we're going to start from scratch okay um, we're going to prepare this now we're going to clean it make sure it's all uh, clean from any dust and uh, any residue or plaster so we can um, membrane we're going to start with corking and sealing all the corners mm -hmm. and then applying the actual membrane and the, the tape and the corners which seal it all together okay so let's get started <laughs> It's like a salami, see? Yeah, look, watch. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start with um, the other one. We're going to start with the uh, five bits first. Because, uh, I'm going to get, get a load of me in that case. So every corner needs to be silicon, is that right? Everything is 90 degrees has to be corked so that uh, any flexibility from movement it won't crack and water won't seep through and uh, that's the idea behind it okay so the, the silicon is not the actual thing doing the waterproofing later on when we put the membrane it does all the work this is just for movement is that right Correct. that's right okay <laughs> Okay, we're ready for the waterproofing, and um, mm, this looks like blueberry cake mix. Is that what it is? No, it's actually a waterproof membrane. Um, every company has its own colours, I suppose. And um, basically what we need also to do that is a paintbrush, a roller, and some uh, waterproof bandage. Bandage? Yes. Well, someone, someone hurt themselves. Yeah, I yeah. did. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically it's a almost see-through material it's um basically when the membrane goes between that it flexes in case there's any movement it also helps things not to crack and break away ah okay <laughs> like a big messy right rainbow you know what that's good for i'll show you how <laughs> okay, so we're going to put some membrane in the corners to start with. I've pre cut the uh, bandage. Yeah, I'm interested to see how this bandage works. So, once we put a coat on it, we then apply the bandage. So, you actually don't need a first aid license to put bandage on here, is that right? Not a first aid license, no. <laughs> And then we put a bit more membrane over the top of that. Okay, so now I'm just doing the uh, in between the two walls. Again, for any movement, the bandage is basically a backup protective uh, thing, so it doesn't crack. So there's like three layers of waterproofing. You got the silicon the membrane and the bandage with the membrane on top of it again and then another coat of membrane on top 
That's correct. Well, basically, if we've got to guarantee our work, we've got to make sure it's done more than 100%. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. So I've noticed, how high would you go with that? Well, basically, you've got, you got your shower rows, and you just got to basically go above that because that's, the water's from, shooting from there down. Okay. All right. Yeah, Mr. Sink, 10 bucks if you have a gold with um, There's no cherries on top. <laughs> it's actually water washable. Okay. So, um, yeah, basically, I mean, obviously you wouldn't uh, eat it or drink it as such. But, Mr. Um, Sink would. He might. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one might not even get used. Okay, so now we've done all the edges, it's all prepared, and now I'm going to start rolling the, uh, the middle. See, I'm flying it nice and thick. Okay, so now we're starting to um, roll the floor. I'm getting my roller stick ready, like the painter. Yeah, that's an interesting point. Now, once that dries, that's actually waterproof, so you can actually have a shower as it is now. We could if we had um, a very painter in the front, maybe a plastic drop sheet. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that's that's now that's that's completely waterproof now. It is, yes. Oh, when it dries, yes, yeah. Obviously. Right, and you also you need to put two coats on this, don't you? Yes, this is the first coat, and um, two or three hours I'll put the second coat. So today I'm going to talk about bidets, or commonly known in Australia, the bidet. We've had a few people call about this sort of thing, so I thought this would be a good time to talk about the purposes and where the bidet came from. So. The history of the bidet is, it was invented in France in the 1700s. The word bidet is a pony. Hence the reason why they call it a pony is because the original bidets, which looked something like that, you actually sat on it like a horse or like a pony. Um, normally, back in the 1700s, you would only find the wealthy or the rich people who had a bidet. It looks something like that. It was actually invented by furniture makers. So it was a part of furniture back in the 1700s. And then when we got to the 1900s, the Italians introduced uh, plumbing to a bidet. And this is what we've got today. So this, this is basically a new age bidet. So 99% of the time, a bidet will be sitting right next to a toilet. Reason for that is basically after you've done your job in the toilet, you would use a bidet to, to wash up. In Australia, it's not a very common piece of furniture or a plumbing item. There are some houses in Australia that do have it, like this one here. If you've been to Europe, you'll find that in many parts of Europe, in um, the Middle East and in South of America, it is, it is common. Actually, in, a, in Italy and in France, 97% of homes will have a bidet in it. It's just like having a basin or a shower. So you're probably wondering um, how you would use a bidet. I'm actually going to show you without taking my clothes off that is and be as clean as possible. Um, so basically there are a couple of reasons why you would use a bidet. The first reason was after you've done your business in the toilet you'd go to the bidet and you would clean yourself. Back in the 1700s the bidet was commonly used um, mainly by the royals or the wealthy people and they would use that before they would do their hanky-panky so to say. So they'll clean their, their private areas before they would actually go into the bedroom and do what they had to do. Nowadays it is a common item in a bathroom where most women would use it in that time of the month or basically when they just needed to freshen up a little bit. Um, men do use it as well. You'll find that in the Middle East, a lot of men use it for washing themselves after they've gone to the WC, or even just before going to bed. 
And in some cultures, they would even use it just to even wash their feet before they went to bed or you know, before they went out for the day. So for those of you who have traveled overseas, mainly in Europe, you'll find that the bidets in Europe are a little bit different to the ones you find here in Australia. In Australia, we only use this sort of a bidet where the tap is at the front. In Europe and in most of um, the other countries around the Middle East and South of America, they would have a little nozzle on the bottom here where the water would spray up, which they would call a douche. In Australia, we're not allowed to use those sort of ones there. It doesn't pass some um, health standards. Basically what that would do in Europe is that water would squirt up. So when you're sitting on the bidet, which I'm going to show you how to sit on the bidet properly in a second, it'll actually wash your, your backside or whichever way you're moving, wash the other areas. So now I will show you how you use a bidet. It is not like your toilet where you would sit on it this way. The bidet is used this way. The reason being is that if you sit down like this, you can actually wash your front parts, not sitting on it that way because it defeats purpose. Hence the reason why there is a gap there. People with big knees like me won't knock the wall when I'm sitting down. So that is how you use a bidet. You asked, I delivered. That is how you use a bidet. Well, I'm sharing a shower with Joe the Tyler man here, and the job's finished. It looks awesome. It's uh, all tiled, completed. All we have to do now is put the taps in and the shower screen and whatnot. In another episode, we're gonna put the shower screen on and uh, show you how easy that is. But uh, let's have a look at this floor. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Um, if you notice what he's done is from corner to corner, he's gone into the waste. And this thing here, which hides the waste, is, that's an awesome idea. Really hides the uh, tile. Yeah, just it makes it look pretty and you don't really notice it. Not really highlighted the uh, grate. Now for the important test. We've got to test if it holds water. Yeah. What do you reckon, it's going to hold water? Definitely not. We, we can check with the level first if you like. All right. If it doesn't hold water, you're wearing a tutu. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I actually have faith in his work. That's not what you tell me. <laughs> oh, look at that. There's a, as you can see here, the hat's falling down. It's falling down that way. So, job well done, Joe. All right, now let's, let's do a water test. Let's do a water test. So there's another project well done, thanks to Joe, the tiler. As you can see, he's um, membraned the bathroom, tiled as well, and looks fantastic. And all that needs to be done now is uh, put a shower screen which we'll do in another episode. What do you think guys, how did it come up? That's come up really well. And there you go everyone. It is really easy to do a membrane and really important to do one. However, we do recommend that you do use a professional like Joe. That way you end up with a uh, 10 year guarantee. So thank you Joe. Thank you Mr. Singh. Thanks Joe. Thank you Rob. Job well done, thanks mate. Now look, we love hearing from you, so we'd like to see some comments or hear some comments on our website, which is mrsinktv.com.au, or you can like us on our Facebook page, which is The Mr. Sink Show. We really hope you enjoyed today's show, and we'll, we'll see, see you, you next time. Well, okay, well. Nowadays, <laughs> how do you plank like this? <laughs> Tile man, Enduro Tiles, who is a licensed. Um... <laughs> Another job well done, thanks to Joe. As you can see in the back, Joe. Thank you, Rob. Job well done. He's um, finished tiling, waterproofed. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you next time. So, I f***ed up. <laughs>